In this tutorial video, I'm going to show you how to extract geological orientation data from a raster surface in ArcGIS. Uh, there are plugins that are available to do this, however, there's still no supported Stereonet plugin for ArcGIS itself. So you're going to have to use this method or one of those plugins to get uh, extracted orientation data from a raster. Uh, so now let's have a look at our surface. If we go into ArcScene, we've got this wonderful lumpy bumpy surface here, and we can rotate it to get a better look. And what we can see is that we've got these features which are running this way, they're all the same. And what this is in fact is, this is the top surface of a set of rotated fault blocks. And this represents uh, the tarbot from a field in the North Sea called Gulfax. And basically we're going to try and get some orientation data from this surface. So now let's go into our map which we're going to be using. So here we are. This black area is no data, um, so we'll just ignore that. I could get rid of it to make it neater, but I'm not going to. And just some more information about this raster. So, the values of elevation are in negative values, and that's because it's a depth raster and it's in two way travel time. So, these are milliseconds, not meters. Um, you know, this hasn't been depth converted, but that doesn't really matter for the purpose of this video um, because we're just going to show the principle. So now, if we go into the toolbox, that was a bit slow there, I don't know why, never mind. And what we're going to do is, we're going to be in the Spatial Analyst, and we're going to go to Surface, and we're going to use Aspect and Slope. Now, Aspect will give us the direction of a slope, so that will give us our dip direction and slope will give us the gradient of a slope and so that will give us our magnitude of dip and these two values together combined can give us a dip vector which we can use in stereonet plotting so first of all to get our aspect we double click on aspect we input our surface so it's tarbot and we choose our output so I'm just going to call this tarb aspect click save press OK and it's working away, it's just been a bit slow. Here it is, it's down the bottom. And there we go, we have a result, this wonderful multicolored aspect map. Now, these grey areas have a value of minus one and they represent flat areas. Um, and the values of 0 to 360 uh, are contoured um, in these colour bands to show the direction of the slope. Um, however, each each value can range from 0 to 360 and that actually gives us the direction of slope, uh, so the dip direction within that particular cell. So now we're going to use the slope tool to get our dip magnitude. Again, we pick our original elevation file and we want to have degrees as our output measurement, not percentage rise, which is the other option. Again, pick our output. So I'm going to call this tab slope. Press save. Click OK. And there we go. We have a, a color slope map. And this shows us the gradient of our slope at a particular raster cell. Um, so we can use this as our dip magnitude. Now what we want is to get our dip vector we need to combine these two values um, and let's say that we have a number of points that we wish to sample on the raster surface. Uh, how do we go about getting two values from two separate rasters into those points? Well, we're going to use the extraction tool and we're going to use extract multivalues to points and we're going to input our point features, we're going to input our rasters and we're going to click OK so now it's working away and now it's finished so now if we click on points we click open attribute table and as you can see I've already done this before so I have doubled up with the columns so I'll just get rid of these ones And what we have now is we have a slope column and an aspect column all contained within this point shape file. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to export that. 
So pick a location, I'm just going to export it to desktop and we'll export it as a text file and we'll give it a name. And I'm not going to bother adding the new table to the current map. Okay, so close that. And now if we open this, we have a comma series delimited file. And we'll double click on that. And here we go. We have our text file. Now I'm just going to tidy this up. Um, you don't have to do this, but for GeoOrient, the plotting software I'm using, um, it likes tidy files. So I've just deleted the header there, and I'm now going to delete this column, which is unnecessary. And I don't actually have to do this, but I just want to. I'm going to format these cells and I'm just going to round them up to get our values. Okay, so I'll just save this now. So we'll save it as a text file in MS DOS format. And we'll save it back on our desktop. Right, click save. Click yes. That's fine. So now we go into our plotting software of choice. And I'm using GeoOrient, which is a product from Rod Holcomb, who's an Australian structural geologist. Um, it's freely available um, with limited function. And this is the one that I, I've, re I've been recommended to use. Um, but there are others out there. And if you've got the money, you can pay for some very expensive and very nice software. But this does the job. Um, so we'll click Agree. We open the data. Tabbed up. Click Open. And we make sure that our convention is in the right format, which, as you can see, automatically isn't. So we want to change to dip and dip direction. And now, when we're plotting, we want to make sure that these columns match up, and they do. So direction is column 2, dip is column 1, that's fine. And we want to plot them as planes. And there we go, we have the poles to our planes from each of those points plotted. And in Georient, we can view this as great circles, or we can keep it as poles, um, whatever you're comfortable with. And you can also perform all kinds of analysis. And there we have it. But for all intents and purposes, the data is there in Stereonap format. And it's also in a text file format. So you can put it in a table. You can do anything you like with it. Um, and it's fine. There you have it. So now, if we go back into ArcMap, Let's say that we want to get data for this entire raster for every single cell. Um, this particular raster, that would be 35,000 values. Um, it's a bit overkill, but I'll just show you how to do it. So again, we're in extraction. We use sample, and we input our slope rasters. So for this input, we use the attributes that we want to sample. And bearing in mind, this is a big field. You know, We can create uh, text files with as many attributes as we like. Um, but for this particular one, we only need the two aspects. And then, now, in this box, we specify the extent that we wish to sample. So we're going to use the original elevation file, and then we pick an output, we click OK, and what we would get then is a very large text file, about three or four megabytes, um, which would have uh, all of our values contained within them. And we could plot that in GeoOrient, and it would probably take a very long time. Um, but it's there if you want to do so. And that really concludes it for this video. Um, it's a very quick one. It's a simple method. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you can find use for it. Um, I particularly encountered this problem many times on the forums, um, and there was no actual direct solution to it. Um, and this really still isn't a direct solution. It's a bit of a workaround, but this should allow you to quickly extract values from surfaces that you've produced through either interpolation or um, from picking seismic data. So, thank you very much for watching. And again, the blog is the fault zone wordpress.com. Um, this is week one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please rate, comment, and uh, follow. Thank you very much. 